got an issue. I've been, you know, you look online and there's so many arguments of role play versus role play. R O L L, role, as in rolling dice, and R O L E, as in playing a role. You take part in playing a role, you have your voices and you have your mannerisms, and you continue that role for your character throughout the entire game. Or you're just like, yo, my character swings his axe. Do I hit? Or I don't know how to figure this out, but my character should know how to figure this out. Just tell me what target number I have to roll to figure this out. The problem with the argument, I think, is that you kind of need both to have a good game. You, you need to be rolling dice, you know, to, to have some sort of balancing factor, something that gives that randomality. Randomality. But to progress the story, you, you need to play a role. You have to craft a story. But crafting a story doesn't make a game. It makes a story. It makes a book. You know, you might as well just be choose your own adventure books, you know, reading one of those things. You know, if you wanted to go here and do this, turn to page 17 and whatnot. But this is a game. It's a tabletop adventure. This is an experience that we dungeon masters are providing our players and experiencing ourselves. You know, the, the enjoyment and the fulfillment that's to be attained by sharing such a wonderful experience with a bunch of friends. And even strangers who you make friends out of. Or can make friends out of. And there seems to be such a such divided camps. That if you're just gonna roleplay, then go and LARP. Not that there's anything wrong with LARPing, but to my understanding, LARPing is, is all about roleplay. There's no dice involved in LARPing. If you're only interested in rolling dice, then play a game like Descent. It's a board game, it, there's really no roleplay in the game except for the fact that you have possible character advancement and whatnot. Hell, play Pathfinder the card game. Roll dice and, you know, level up, gain equipment and whatever it's... But it's an entirely different experience than playing a, a tabletop role-playing game. You know? If you're sitting down playing a tabletop role-playing game and you're just interested in interjecting your role play into the Dungeon Masters Game Masters world, I find that to be very similar to a game that is entirely quick time events. Where nothing you do really matters. Nothing you do really changes the outcome. You just select an option and a predetermined outcome happens. Or you go through a quick time event and push certain buttons. It's almost the same as having different options. And as long as you get the right combination, a predetermined outcome happens. And the, the power of a tabletop role playing game is, is the fact that there does not need to be a predetermined outcome. That you don't need to ride the rails, as it were. You have the option to do, or at least try, anything you can come up with. And that part is the roleplay aspect. You know, but you need to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. And that has to deal with roll, rolling dice, metagaming, crafting your character. You know, creating something mechanically good enough to work with, but also crafting something fun enough to roleplay. I enjoy both. As a player, I power game my ass off. You know, I'm currently playing a 5th edition game where I'm level 4, I have one level of fighter, 
one level of Barbarian and two levels of Druid. And for fun, uh, I'm a Halfling. I could have picked a stronger race, but I decided to go Halfling with the sub-race of Stout Halfling, so at least I have the increase to Constitution and the whole Poison Resistance thing. That's great. But I also roleplay my character. I'm a little bit impulsive. I, I tend to hold back because most of the other players in the game aren't power built and kind of would avoid combat. So I'm not that reckless. But I do play a Napoleonic complex type character. He's got a problem with people seeing him as short. He's always like, I'm the big man in here. Don't you look down on me. Looking at taller people as if they're the short ones. But it also helps that he can wild shape into a, a great big brown bear. And, although great big brown bear is very useful in combat, it basically gives him almost 40 temporary hit points, extra attacks, extra damage. A slew of nice things. I could rage in bear form and all that beautifulness. But I still role play. And that's what you need to do. You know, the metagame part is also very important. I don't mind the metagame. The problem is, is that there's a lot of players that are too interested in the metagame. They're always, well, if I take action B, what would happen? As opposed to, I'm taking action B. Whatever happens, throw it my way. You know, they always take that portion of the metagame and, oh, well, you know, you're just trying to kill us when they fuck up. You know, if you if there's a door and you're in an abandoned house or an abandoned mansion and you hear growling and scratching on the other side of the door. Are you gonna tell your DM, yeah, if I open the door, would that thing come at me? Dude, your character wouldn't know that. You would have to find out along with your character. Open the door and find out. Doors don't sit perfectly. Look, you know, beneath the door. See if you see anything through the cracks. You know, if, if you put a piece of food down there, does something scratch at the food? Does it not? Can you see into the room? You know, something. Just do something. Or just flat out ignore it. Find something to put up against the door and hope whatever's in there trying to get out doesn't get out. Just know what you want to do and do it. That's part of role-playing, not just, well, we meet the governor, and I'm wondering, governor, you have a mission for us? We want more gold. You know, that's, yeah, that's role-play, as far as, you know, playing the role of your character, and having those social interactions, but that's not the extent of role play. People forget that combat is part of role playing and not just R O L L, but R O L E, role. You know, in combat, you're playing the role of a hero or the role of an adventurer at the very least. And you have to decide what that adventurer is going to do. What would that adventurer do? What would you like? the adventure that you're portraying to do, or to at least try, and go for it, stick to your guns, play your character. If you're afraid of what could happen to your character, that's when the meta comes in. That's when when you're building your character, you build your character to sort of survive certain things. Or you build your character to be afraid of certain things, you know? And then you play that role out. Well. I'm afraid of combat, so I try to avoid combat. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, there's a zombie. Don't worry, I'm here. Barbarian, charging. 
You know, and you throw a spell or an arrow or something, and, and you basically pop shit. And that's still awesome. My, my brother in a Star Wars campaign I ran played a colonist who took the doctor specialization, and he bitched out of every combat. He was like, oh, I hide behind the table, I hide behind the chair. And he was playing the role of a character that had seen enough combat throughout the Clone Wars, that he was a, a medic during the Clone Wars, and he's had it. He just wanted to escape his past, and he wanted to help people. And in the group that we were in, you know, we were reckless, causing trouble, and during a fight, he would hide. He would come back and maybe help patch us up afterwards, but he would hide. And my brother, as a player, loves combat. He loves to fight. He loves to play that heroic role. But he thought it would be fun to play the guy who just doesn't want to fight. So he didn't fight. Now, whether or not the other players were like, oh, you should have helped us, and, and this and that, that's when they're metagaming. They're not role playing. They're not playing their characters. They're like, oh, you should have helped us. You know, I, I've heard commentary on, you know, munchkinning, where the players go, okay, you run into a door. Is the door a trap? I don't know, check it. Hey, who has the best trap checking skill? Anybody? What's your trap checking skill? What's your trap checking skill? What's your trap checking skill? <gasps> you have missed. Check for a trap. That's okay. You know, it, it, it breaks your immersion into the game by leaps and bounds. But role play as far as, you know, role playing. Taking your character and I'm going to play the role of the leader because nobody's stepping up to the plate. They're just asking the DM, well, is that door trapped? And the DM goes, oh no, check it. Now you go, I, I'm not good at checking for traps. Would any of you blokes be good at checking for traps? Will somebody check the trap? Check the door for traps. I am a little bit frightened. Play it off and, you know, that gives somebody with the skill to check for traps to come in like, I'm just saying that and to be afraid of as long as I'm here. And then you move into both a mechanical way to let a character shine and be the MVP, as well as character development, story development, social interaction between actual player characters which people are losing the social interaction between player characters which is it sucks and I'm rambling and ranting about this far too long there's just so much about this I really don't understand the division I love role play R-O-L-E I, I love it and I love role play R-O-L-L -L. I love it 